And what I've got here is a demand supply diagram. And the initial equilibrium is at E1 at a price of $10. So we've got the demand curve D and the supply curve S1. Now what I've done in this diagram is I've imposed a $2 per unit tax on the market. Now that has the effect of moving the supply curve up vertically by $2. Now the logic behind that is if we focus on unit Q1, prior to the tax the supplier needed $10 to supply unit number Q1. After the tax of $2 is imposed, the supplier would need $12. $10 that they needed previously and the two, an additional $2 to cover the tax. So in this diagram, point A is at a vertical height of $12. Now, after we shift the supply curve up by $2 vertically, it moves from S1 to S2. The new market equilibrium is at E2 at a price of $10.80. Now you can see just from the diagram, what happens or what doesn't happen is the price doesn't go from $10 up to $12 after the $2 tax is imposed. The price actually goes up by only 80 cents. And that is just the way the, the market uh, operates, the interaction of demand and supply gives us that result. So consumers will hand over $10.80 to producers and the producers will take that $10.80 and they will have to pay the $2 tax to the government. So the point Q2, $8.80 on the first supply curve, uh, that is the supply, Q2 is the new supply, and $8.80 is the amount of money that the producer gets to keep after handing over $10, uh, $2 tax out of the $10.80 selling price. So consumers are paying $10.80, but producers, after they pay the tax to the government, only get to keep $8.80. So once we appreciate the difference between what consumers pay and what producers actually get to keep in terms of uh, revenue, we're ready to start looking at uh, the burden of the tax, i.e. who pays the tax. In this example, we can see that consumers paid an extra 80 cents so consumers paid 80 cents for the $2 tax, but compared to the initial point of $10, producers receive $1.20 less. So effectively, consumers are paying 80 cents of the tax and producers are paying $1.20 of the tax. The quantity does decrease in the market from Q1 to Q2, which is very often the point of a tax to, to decrease the amount of uh, consumption in, in a particular market. But um, while the reduction in consumption is interesting, it's really the burden of the tax that we're interested in here. Now, what you'll see in the next slide is the burden of the tax between consumers and producers depends upon the slopes of the curves. So what I've done is I've changed this diagram. I've kept the, uh, the supply curve curves roughly similar, although I have actually reduced their slope a little bit, but what I've actually done is substantially increased the slope of the demand curve. So the demand curve is much, much higher now. So when the same $2 tax is imposed, you can see that the price that consumers actually pay in the market increases from P1 up to PC, whereas the amount of money that uh, producers get to keep falls from P1 down to PP. So the burden of the tax, once we change the slopes of these curves, is falling far more heavily on consumers in this example. And while that makes sense graphically, let's think about it intuitively. We've now steepened the demand curve substantially, and consumers are paying most of the tax. So why would that be the case? Well, what we saw in a previous example was that, for example, cigarettes, Addictive goods, goods that consumers absolutely need to have, have very steep demand curves. So if you go into a marketplace and place a $2 tax on, say, cigarettes, because of the steepness of the demand curve, consume, it will, the, the market will work this out, but consumers will pay the bulk of the tax.
What I want you to do in extending your understanding now of the economics of a tax example is perhaps draw uh, a diagram where you've got a very flat or elastic demand curve and very steep supply curves. Shift the supply curve up by say $2 and see who pays most of the tax. The answer will be producers, but try to think intuitively about why it is producers would pay most of the tax when the supply curve is very inelastic and the demand curve is very elastic. If you go through that exercise, it certainly will help your understanding of these types of market interventions. So that's a tax and pay particular attention to the slopes of the curves here because they will tell you who pays the burden of the tax.